Hi, I'm Frankie. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how insights and analytics can be found for the way your applications interact with API management. This series is based on the Azure API Management Hands-On Lab. If you want to follow along or do it on your own, you can find a link to it in the description. To start looking at insights and analytics for my Azure API Management instance, I can navigate from the overview page down to the monitoring section, and I can see there's three different kinds of analytics and monitoring solutions that we can look at. The analytics section allows us to see API information, where it was sent, what API requests were made, and more. It does this using the log analytics workspaces that are built into Azure to see information and analytics on many Azure resources. The analytics classic section shows the same information or at least very similar, but it does this using the old version of analytics, which is built into Azure API management. You won't see this classic analytics page if you're using a consumption or V2 version of Azure API management. And at the time of this recording, the analytics classic page is scheduled to sunset on March, 2027. If you want to learn more about that, I'll add a link to it in the description. The last form of monitoring is using application insights. Application insights allows developers to track how API requests are handled all throughout the API lifecycle within Azure API management and their other application solutions. Let's create a log analytics workspace now. Using our naming convention, I'll call it log analytics. It'll be dead environment in East US for the hands-on lab, Azure Innovation Station in number one. Then we'll review and create this, create. Our deployment is complete. Now we can go to our resource. Right now there's nothing connected to this log analytics workspace, so I wouldn't expect there to be any information associated with it. To add my log analytics workspace to my Azure API management instance, I can go to the analytics page. I can select collect data from a resource. I'll select my log analytics workspace and I'll save this. I already had data in this log analytics workspace, which is why I can view it now. But note, if you create a log analytics workspace, it may take two to three hours before it can collect data and display it to you in your Azure API management instance. When we add a log analytics workspace to Azure API management, it's added as a diagnostic setting. We can edit the diagnostic setting if we want to change how data is collected by our log analytics workspace. In here, we can specify the kind of logs we want to collect. There's only one set of metrics we can collect, which is all or nothing. And we can decide with our diagnostic setting where we want information to be sent. In this example, we have information going to our log analytics workspace and data we collect is specific for our Azure API management instance. Let's send some requests so that we can start seeing data in our analytics page. I'll come to my basic calculator API, add two integers, and I'll test by sending a couple requests. Now, after a few minutes, I should be able to go to my analytics page and see the data here. I'll filter for the last five minutes and I'll wait until the data displays. I refresh the data and now I can see my requests that I just made. I can see the timeline of when these requests were made. I can see the geography of where they came from, all in the United States, I can see the specific APIs that I called, which was just my basic calculator API. I can see the operations, the products that were used, subscriptions, and more. The analytics classic page shows this same information in slightly different formats. If I look at my geography, APIs, operations, I can see all the same information this is using the older version of how to view analytics, where analytics is stored in your Azure API management instance. Again, note, this is being sunset in March of 2027 as of this recording. Let's create our application insights resource. Application insights. And start creating it. I'll use our naming convention for the name. Application Insights does use a log analytics workspace to function. 
and we could use the same log analytics workspace that we just created, but I'll create a new one just to keep the data separate. Review and create, and I'll create it. It's done. I can go to the resource, and just like my log analytics workspace, there shouldn't be any data here because it's not connected to anything. And now let's look at application insights. Right now I can see I don't have an application insights resource connected. I'll add one. I'll select our app insights resource we created. The default login checkbox allows me to collect data on all APIs for my app insights resource and the add availability monitor setting lets my app insights resource check my Azure API management instance to make sure it's available periodically. I'll create this. Now when I go to my APIs, I can go to all APIs and I can select settings and see that application insights is configured for all my APIs. Let's understand how these settings work. Application insights is enabled. My destination is the app insights resource I created. Sampling helps your application insights resource know how many requests it should be collecting at a time. If you collect too many requests, then your Azure API management instance will not perform as well. Application insights is meant to do statistical analysis. So we'll only sample about 50% of the requests that are coming through our API gateway to go to application insights. You can learn more about these implications for high API traffic scenarios by going to the documentation. We want to log all errors that occur to our App Insights resource. We want to log the client IP addresses so we can track where requests are coming from. You have the option to create and add custom metrics if you want to send them to Application Insights. We can choose how much information we want sent to our Application Insights resource, whether we just want errors, basic information, or all the data, which would be the verbose setting. The correlation protocol is to help API requests get tracked end to end throughout the whole life cycle. This is important for distributed systems because a lot of microservices will have requests that bounce around and it's hard to keep track of where they start and where they end. By default, Application Insights does not collect the headers or the payload data on API requests, but you can decide to have App Insights collect this data if you choose. We can also get more granular as to the headers and the payload information we want to get sent to our App Insights resource. When API requests are sent to our API management instance, there's always a front-end request and response and a back-end request and response. We can choose to collect headers or the payload data from any of these specific points in the API lifecycle. I can go into any of these points in the API lifecycle and specify the data I want to collect. I won't do this for now and I'll save this. I also have the option to go into specific APIs and change the settings for the application insights data collection for that API. The data that's collected for the application insights resource on this API overrides the global application insights settings that we were just looking at. I'll choose the same instance. And for this API, we will collect all the sampling data. I want this data to be verbose for this API and I'll save it. Now let's send some test requests and then look back at Application Insights to see the data. Going to Application Insights. It might take a few minutes for your data to populate. After a few minutes, we can start to see our data coming through. Some of the other things you can do in Application Insights is look at the application map, which is helpful to see how applications are interacting with each other. We can see our APIM instance, which is interacting with our calculator API's backend. And this will grow when you add more solutions to your application insights resource. We can also view transactions that take place. I can view all the data for the last 24 hours and see a variety of information about each of these requests. Let's look at three of these requests. I can see that application insights got a request when a request was made to our API gateway to do the add calculation for our calculator API. I can see information was also sent to Application Insights when our request was forwarded to the backend calculator API from our API gateway. 
And separately, I see I have an application insights availability test to make sure that my API management instance is up and running properly. There's a lot more that application insights can do for you. And if you want to learn more about it, I've added some links in the description. With application insights and log analytics, you should be able to get started with monitoring your Azure API management solution. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And if you missed any of the past Azure API management videos I've put together, you can find some of those here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.